All right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Chandra, and I'll be chairing this session. So our first speaker is Shi Jin Zhu from Tsinghua University, and he will speak about uh, better semantics uh, exploration for browser fuzzing. OK, thanks for the introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Shi Jin, a PhD student at Tsinghua University. Today, I'm going to introduce our recent research towards better semantic exploration for browser fuzzing. And browser security is a very important topic because if a browser is vulnerable, attackers can leverage the vulnerabilities to attack any internet users. So the goal of browser fuzzers is to generate a large number of HTML files which can explore browser states and hopefully we can trigger some bugs and report them to uh, browser developers and help them improve their code quality. And there were several browser fuzzers proposed in the last decade, and they evolve over time and pay more and more attention to the semantics correctness of fuzzing. And generally speaking, browser fuzzers relied on handwritten grammar, usually in the form of uh, context-free grammar. And during the test case generation, they generate derivation trees based on the grammars, and finally instantiate a, a HTML file from these uh, derivation trees. And the right side figure is an example of code generation. And let's first look at uh, the CSS part. And the start symbol is a CSS root, which is a non-terminal symbol. And the father will randomly select a production rule to expand this non-terminal symbol. And suppose it is expanded to this expression, and then we recursively to, uh, to expand the uh, non-terminal symbol, all the, all the non-terminal symbols of this expression. And for example, we expand this non-terminal symbols symbol to a terminal symbol, and we expand uh, this CSS property non-terminal symbol to another expression, and we expand all the terminal symbols one by one, and finally reach a terminal-only expression, and, and we can translate this derivation tree to a CSS code. And this is the uh, CSS code and generated by, the, uh, by this derivation tree. And similarly, we can generate JavaScript code and HTML code, and finally, combine them to a test case. Uh, that's how existing browser fuzzer, browser fuzzers work. But the, the question we put here is that, uh, are they good enough? A good browser fuzzer should be able to explore diverse semantics of, of browsers and generate semantically correct test cases. That's the uh, common sense of fuzzing research. And let's put a figure to illustrate how fuzzers explore browser's input space. And suppose this figure presents the input space of a browser. And the green area is the semantically valid input space. And the uh, gray area is the, uh, is the invalid input space. And ideally, a good fuzzer should generate test cases like uh, the green crosses in this figure. All the test cases are valid and cover diverse area of valid input space. That's an ideal case. But according to our observations, actually, existing, existing fuzzers generate test cases like, uh, like this figure. Their uh, handwritten grammars limit their limit the area they can explore, and in the meanwhile, they may generate some invalid test cases because of memory mistakes or because the uh, grammars they wrote are outdated. So in this paper, we aim to address their pitfalls. And the goal of our paper is to automatically generate quality grammars to improve browser fuzzing. And our key insight is that is to build a uh, uh, build input grammars based on W3C standards, which describes input specifications of browsers in, in natural language. And 
our workflow is that uh, first we extract a preliminary grammar from W3C standards to broaden our search space. And, but it is inevitable that the, the grammar introduces some semantic errors. So we also have a process to refine the grammar based on, based on semantic feedback from, from browser executions. And as a result, our father can efficiently explore the, the input space. And regarding to our system design, the first step is uh, grammar extraction. We uh, extract a context-free a context grammar from the W3C standards and browser source. And next, we want to ensure the semantic correctness of our uh, extracted grammar. And the whole process is based on uh, browser execution feedbacks. And as a result, we obtain a grammar with semantic information. And the final step is to use the uh, grammar to generate high quality, high quality test cases. And we will detail the, these three steps one by one. And the first step is grammar extraction. In this step, we, trans we transform the WC W3C standards into a context-free grammar, and we shorten the term, we shorten the context-free grammar as a CFG. And as we all know, uh, a CFG is a tuple of NTPS, uh, where N is a set of non-terminal symbols, T is a set of terminal symbols, and P is a set of production rules, uh, which maps from uh, a non-terminal symbol to a sequence of symbols. And S is a desired start symbol. And we want to construct this CFG to facilitate our father. So it is supposed to be, it, it is supposed to satisfy these requirements. First, uh, production rules should cover diverse semantics, right? That's our, um, that's our research goal. And second, every expansion of non-terminal symbols can be terminated, which means that there is no infinite loops in the, uh, in the expansions of non-terminals. And of course, we also want, uh, want to generate a test case, which is a pure string. So every non-terminal symbol should be able to be expanded to a terminal-only expression. And our tool um, can satisfy this these requirements, but due to the, time, due to the time constraints, I, I cannot explain the details today. Uh, but simply speaking, for the uh, first requirement, we propose several curiosity strategies. And for the second requirement, we detect and delete those non-terminal symbols whose production rules uh, will lead to infinite loop. And for the third requirement, we conduct a static uh, data flow analysis uh, on browser source code to find proper terminal symbols. And finally, we can make sure every non-terminal uh, every non-terminal symbol can be expanded to a terminal-only expression. And the second step is the uh, semantic inference where we want to turn the uh, extracted CFG into a production context sensitive grammar and uh, which which I shorten it as a PCSG. And we've defined the PCSG in a very similar way uh, with the, uh, the CFG, except that we append a context checking function uh, for, for each production rule. This context checking function, and CP, uh, aims to check if selecting this production rule P under a, certain, under a certain context is likely to produce a, a symmetrically correct test case or a symmetrically incorrect test case. And let's consider this example for, for, better, for better understanding. And suppose, we, we are gen, suppose we are generating a test case and we have selected production PB1, production rule PB1 and PB2, and now we want to expand the, uh, the remaining 
uh, non-terminal symbols. And as we said before, uh, a father will randomly select a production rule to expand this non-terminal symbol. So suppose the production rule uh, selected by our father is, uh, is called PP3, and then our father would like to know uh, if this production rule is a right choice under this context. And our PCSG will tell the father, uh, I, I, I have checked the context checking function and for this production rule, PP3, and under this very specific, uh, certain, uh, very specific context, uh, this, this function will return false, uh, which means that it is likely to cause a semantic error and so the father will know, oh, I, I, I should choose another production rule instead of the uh, PP3. And that's how the context checking function works. And the fact, uh, and the fact is that uh, if the father really select a PP3 in this, con in this context, the generated test case will trigger a semantic uh, error. So it will prevent the, our father uh, from exploring the uh, browser's state. So uh, the question here is that uh, how we can know the context checking function for each production rule. And basically we design a tree-based data structure to record the semantic incorrectness information. And first we uh, randomly generate some derivation trees and transfer them into test cases and collect the, semantic, collect the semantic feedback of browser executions. And so we can obtain many occurrence statistics. And finally, uh, we can know, uh, and this data structure can help us identify the, uh, the invalid context of each production rule. And so we put a very simple example to illustrate how we use the PCSG to generate the test case. For, first, we have a a star symbol and we randomly select a rule from our grammar and ask the, ask the uh, context checking function if it is likely to cause a semantically correct test case. And if it is, then we will choose this, uh, this, this production rule and, if, and add, it, add this rule to our context. And if it isn't, we select another one until um, come up with a good choice. And recursively, we randomly select a rule and expand all the non-terminal symbols and ask the, ask the uh, context checking function for semantic correctness and update the context. So finally, we successfully built a semantically correct derivation tree and then we can transfer it to a, a test case. That's how our fuzzle works. And according to our experiment, the performance of our father is quite good. He has found 60, 62 real-world bugs, and 10 of them are assigned CVIDs, indicating our father can trigger some critical security issues. And compared to existing browser fathers, uh, our father can achieve a significant improvement. And during the code generation, it will introduce a very small overhead. And to sum up, we propose an automatic grammar generation uh, for efficient browser fuzzing, and our prototype achieved a good performance, and the, the artifact uh, is available at, at Zenodo and also at the uh, GitHub repository. And that's all, thank you for listening. Questions? Uh, so, so as I understand it, um, this this semantic refinement process is uh, is based on the browser. I think you said source code, um, but feedback from the system under test because the browser is also the system under test. So you're effectively using one system as its own oracle during fuzzing. I don't understand how you aren't possibly, or how it, are you possibly um, missing uh, like large portions of the of valid search space by, by invalidating those based on this semantic refinement. Yeah, sure. Uh, 
In fact, it will miss some uh, some thematic information, of course. And but the first step, the first step of our uh, approach is to try to broaden the search space, and so that it can uh, cover all the functionalities of browsers. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, all the functionalities of browsers. So. Uh, uh, Although the, the second phase, uh, the semantic inference, will lose some uh, semantic information and may miss, uh, may, 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 may let the search space uh, smaller, but I think it's, uh, it's quite worth to, to, to try the semantic inference because if we don't use it, it, may, it, will, it will generate a large number of semantically incorrect test cases. So uh, that's a trade-off, actually. Okay. So I just wanted to clarify a little bit about your inputs. Uh, so you're pulling from standard specification. Are you just pulling out the grammar portions of it, or are you like parsing anything else from the web specs? Uh, we just use the, uh, the raw text of the uh, W3C standards. Right, but they're giant uh, HTML files. Uh, like, are you, are you just being like, Ah, this looks like a, a grammar section. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. It's a little heuristic, and okay. uh, we we pay a, a some manual efforts. But, uh, yeah, that, that that that's what you said. And do you have time for one? Uh, based on uh, human heuristics. All right. Let's thank the speaker one more time. I know there's more questions, so. Hopefully